All right, folks, welcome to another edition of Lid Tips, the ham radio show where we talk about and discuss topics that are of interest to ham radio or amateur radio operators. In today's video, we're going to build a 4 to 1 ballon, or unun, depending upon who you ask. We're going to test it out on a Nano VNA, but we're not going to build an antenna with it today. We're going to save this unun, or ballon, for future antenna projects. Now, if that sounds like something you want to watch, why don't you do yourself a favor? Go grab a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get start. Oh, wait a second. Before we get started, there's some buttons down below. A like button, subscribe button, a comment button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. Before we get started, I wanted to say a big thanks to Jim Perry and Baron Boss. I hope I said that right. They're our newest patrons. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, let's take a quick look at what we're going to use here. Now, here is an FT140-43 toroid, and I wrapped it with 12 turns with the 18-gauge wire. And I did this because I wanted to make sure that I could fit 12 turns on here. Typically, I do a 9-turn wrap for a 1-to-1 -one -one current choke or CMC choke. And uh, this is the wire that I use, Tofang. It's a single core uh, tinned wire, 18 gauge, and it's a solid wire. And uh, taking a look in here, you can see that I've got all kinds of pretty colors. And for this one, we're going with the ketchup and mustard theme of red and yellow. We're going to use a Nano VNA, and we're going to test the impedance of this, uh, of, of this ballon once it's done. Now here's a little project tray that I printed out of my 3D printer. Uh, you want to use yourself some side cutters. They came with my uh, soldering iron. And then we're going to use some solder. We're using a uh, lead core rosin solder, which is probably a bad thing. And then here is the uh, T140-43 ferrite toroid. And then this is just some test gear that I whipped up that allows me to connect some alligator clips to my Nano VNA. And we'll use that for testing. Also, we're going to use some resistors to simulate an antenna load. These are 100 ohm resistors, so we're going to wire them up in series. And then I just got some other junk in here, like uh, cable ties and heat shrink. Just stuff that we're going to need. All right, it wouldn't be a smoking ape video if we didn't do a little bit of internet. So taking a look at this website, it's by M0PZT, and uh, that feller seems like he knows his stuff. And what he talks about here is building a 4 to 1 current ballon. Uh, he gives a couple of different reasons. He talks about G5RVs. He talks about doublets. Uh, he talks a little bit about delta loops. And then he talks about off-center fed dipoles. And uh, if you take a look at this, this looks similar to just two one-to-one -one, uh, current balance or chokes. And uh, when you go ahead and you read down here, he says the correct way to build this is with two cores, not one core. Uh, he talks a little bit about sizing and, and uh, the amount of watts that you can use. For this project, we used 18 gauge wire and we used two 140-3, uh, 140-43 uh, ferrite toroids. That's right, toroids. And uh, I think that I'll be able to handle up to 100 watts with this. Uh, and that's going to be used in things like FT8. And so we're just going to give it a try. And if it burns up, it burns up. We'll build something else. Anyhow, when you scroll down, Here's what the finished product looks like. Now, what's different is, is that these are 12 turns. When I build a one-to-one -one, uh, choke, I typically do nine turns. I suppose I could do 12, but I do nine. Um, and then when you come down and talk about uh, 200 ohms becoming 50 ohms, and when we test this out, we're going to use two 100 ohm resistors uh, soldered together in, um, in series, and that should give us 200 ohms of resistance. He talks about some examples online where you can see how some of these are built to what he says is incorrectly or improper. Oddly enough, one of the first pictures that comes up is his. But if you take a look, this looks like a nine to one to me, um, but uh, maybe it's not. It's, uh, well, it's not because it's, got, it's only got two wires as opposed to three. Uh, if you come down here, this one's a little bit more similar to what we're gonna be building. Let me just go back to that website. And I want to scroll down, and here he talks about using it for uh, fan dipole. Anyhow, uh, here is an antenna, and I'm very interested in these, and I want to build one in the future. So this is likely what we're going to use this for. This will be our next project, our next antenna project, most likely. And you can see they're using a one-to-one -one ballon. Now, this off-center fed dipole is uh, for 80 meters and below. 
we're probably going to do one for 40 because I just don't have a big enough yard or garden, as they say in the UK. The other thing is, is this is a pretty interesting looking project too, is a Delta Loop. I don't have one, but uh, I have a buddy over there on HRCC, Evan, and he had one of these and he was saying how he liked it quite a bit. And then you can see with these Delta Loops uh, here in this example, they have the four to one ballon mounted at the top or the apex. You can mount that ballon at any of the, uh, any of the corners here. All right, let's keep going. We're now switching to the eye in the sky cam, as I like to call it, for the actual wrapping of the toroid. And I'm just going to take a quick look at this one and make sure that everything's right. We're going to use the wire that we looked at earlier, and uh, this is sped up. I did not wrap it this quickly. Now, you want to make sure that you secure your wires to your toroid, and I use these cable ties, and it works out fantastically. It's, uh, it's very helpful and allows me to maintain a very tight wrap. Now just a little tip, what I like to do is use my thumb to push the wires through the center of the toroid. And uh, once I do that uh, and get it a little bit through, I'll pull it the rest of the way out. It helps keep it uh, from twisting or kinking and keeps the wraps very tight. Now this gets a little bit more difficult when we do the over or under wrap that goes across the toroid. But uh, just maintain your composure, be calm, and then uh, just make sure that you get a nice tight wrap. Don't cross any wires over and then try to make sure that your spacing is even and consistent. It's the best way to do it. Okay, and they're done and uh, they look pretty good. They're consistent. So now I'm going to start prepping them for the test. And I'm using these vice grip wire strippers that uh, were a recommendation from my buddy Good Game Ham Radio and Outdoors. And uh, they work fantastic. So what I'm going to just do is I'm going to strip these off. And what we need to do is at the top of the toroids, you are going to use the red wire from the one on the left for your antenna, the yellow wire from the one on the right for your short end of your antenna, if you're doing an off-center fed dipole, for example. And then we're going to connect the red and yellow in the top from the center. Then on the bottom, we're going to connect the two reds to each other. That will be our center. And then we'll connect the two yellows, which will be... Uh, for our shield. So here you can see I've got everything wired up and as mentioned the center yellow and red are connected together. Simulating the antenna we have the resistors that we spoke about and then on the bottom we have our two reds connected and soldered and our two yellows connected and soldered. Now what we're going to do is use these alligator clips. The red goes to red and the black will go to yellow. The red on the alligator clips will be our center point, and then the black will be our shield if we were connecting this up to some coax. And then now I'm going to connect this up to my nano VNA. I'm going to take the nano VNA and I'm going to connect it to my computer, and we're going to get some readings and see how it turns out. Now what I'm going to say before we start taking a deep dive into these results is that I'm surprised. And what you can see on the, the lower bands, uh, like 80 meters, 40 meters, for example, we have a much lower SWR than we do on the higher uh, bands. And what we did is we did a sweep from 1 megahertz to just over 29 megahertz. Uh, I'm really interested in antennas that operate from 40 to 10. That uh, is where my interest lies, and it's about what I can squeeze into the backyard. And then uh, you can see as we get up to 20, we're under two and a half, but uh, really higher up, or I should say lower in the bands is where we get uh, a much better SWR match. So I'm really surprised by this. I would have thought it would have been a little bit lower all the way up through 10, uh, th through the 10 meter bands. But, um, you know, maybe it's the test gear. Maybe it's the way I made the device. Maybe it's the toroids that I used. Who knows? I'm still planning to use this to uh, do some antenna builds and see how they turn out. Um, while this uh, SWR does go up high towards the end, it doesn't really make me nervous per se. Uh, my tuner should easily handle that. But I'd rather not. I'd rather, it, uh, rather the toroid do its job or the ballon do its job and have a little bit better match. Anyhow, that being said, I want to thank everybody for watching. Please post any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations below. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate everybody for taking the time to watch.